Hello and welcome to this episode of Pipeline to Profitability. I'm Alan Ferguson, and this podcast is proudly sponsored by Service Success Academy. So today, I'm joined by Rob Morgan from Cloud Connect. Now, Rob is a certified systemologist and business systems expert based in Shell Cove, Australia. Wondering where that is? It's near Sydney. So Rob works closely with David Jennings author of the book Systemology. And uh, so anyone that wants to improve their business systems and processes, this is going to be a really good episode. So uh, let's uh, let's jump in, shall we? Hey, Talon, and uh, I want to uh, welcome uh, Rob to uh, this episode of Pipeline to Profitability. And Rob is a system expert, and I'm going to take you straight in, buddy, and uh, let you tell our uh, listeners a little bit about you and what you actually do to improve contractors' lives with improving systems. Welcome, Rob. Uh, thanks, Alan. Thanks for having me. Um, I always say when I meet someone new that when someone says, what do you do? I just say I'm a systemologist. And sometimes that gets confusing because people go, systemologist? So is that Scientology? And the first response is, no, I actually help businesses systemize the processes and turn them into systems and document them and get them all done. So as a systemologist, we really look after businesses, particularly in the trading industry, about how a business owner can become a business owner. So they become, they start with a trading, they become a contractor, then they become their own business. And now they have everything in their head and they're trying to systemize everything. So what we do through the world of systemology is come in and support them, write down everything they do, look at the services they're providing, document those and turn them into processes of which they can repeat. You know, if, it's, if they're teaching something new to someone and someone can watch that a thousand times and they only have to record it once, that's our goal. So it started way back about three, three and a half years ago. I read the systemology book and I thought, wow, I'm going to do this for my own business. I then learned that I could become a systemologist and out already I was doing IT support and have done IT support for 30 years. And going into the, the space of consulting and mentoring and business coaching felt like a natural progression. But me being a tech head and a bit of a geek, found the technology behind writing systems and being very organized fit perfectly with what I was trying to build as a model for my own business. So I sold the IT company that I had in 2018, focused just purely on consulting and business mentoring. And then systemology came in. And now here we are three and a half years later, and my primary goal and my primary business model is now helping other businesses systemize so they could either franchise or they can sell, even if they don't want to. It's great to know that they could if they ever did want to. So that's a bit about me and, and where I kind of started. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, we've been uh, we've been doing a lot of bit a little, little bit of work together over the uh, you know the last six months. We've had you in our uh, private coaching group. And uh, you've actually been working with a few of our uh, our plumbers that we're working with. You know, we primarily coach uh, plumbers on how to improve their their systems and processes to run a a more profitable drain call. And um, yeah, the last time you came in, uh, it was it was good to actually get you interacting with everyone in our group. And I know. I am no stranger to systems, and I've been uh, I've been in the, the the training industry for quite a few years now, and I've I've been uh, uh, I suppose honoured to have met Michael E. Gerber a couple of times. Don't know him um, to uh, you know I, I couldn't just call him and say hey Michael it's Alan because we've met at at trade events that we've both been in or one we were involved with one was a was a bigger event. But uh, got to meet the guy. I've, I've read all of his books, and uh, I love what he's about. Now I know uh, the founder of Systemology, uh, David Jennings, has actually shares an amazing story about Michael Gerber. But um, this is, I suppose, today's podcast is all about how contractors can use systems and the likes of uh, you know your the companies that you are involved with to improve their day-to-day -day life with uh, their plumbing, electrical, heating and cooling business. Yeah. So David Jennings, and you probably you obviously read the book Systemology. I have. He basically met with Michael Gerber and went to California and worked with Michael Gerber directly to help Michael launch his next book. And through that process, Michael Gerber decided and worked out and summarized that David Jennings' book, The Systemology, 
was the next stage of the e-myth. It's the e-myth 2021, he called it. And so the extension of that mindset of the e-myth mindset followed under the same presence of, you know, working more on your business than working in your business. So that evolved into the point now where when you're looking at systemology, there's a seven step platform in which you do it. There's steps to do it. There obviously is because in order to create systems for your own business, there needs to be a system for that. And it's kind of that rabbit hole that we talk about that, oh, I'm doing that more than once. We should probably document that. Ooh, that sounds like a system. That's a process that we should capture. So it evolves from that point. And particularly in the trading industry, where again, most of the trades that we know are out on site. They're working, they're doing it, they're on the tools, they're working with the other techs and, and the guys that are out on site. The goal there is how do we start eliminating that business owner from doing the day-to-day operations of running the business? How do we allow them to step back, look at their business as an investor and say, right, we now have a team, amazing team that are out on site on tools. We're doing 16, 20 jobs every single day. I'm managing this and I go out to the job sites when I need to because they're following a system. So the way the systemology approaches that is kind of turning that chaos into control. So the first thing you wanna do when you're trying to systemize your business is look at the first job you ever did. Why did you become a plumber in the first place, for example? So what did that look like? Well, I love being a plumber. I've been an apprentice for five years and then I was a business owner for the next five years and it's a great business, but I'm still out on the tools every single day. Mm-hmm. So the way to capture that system is look at the first job you did that made you decide to be a plumber in the first place or any trading, but this, what did you do? Oh, we did this big job, a pipe job, whatever that looks like. We want to be able to capture that through what's called a critical client flow. So we'd say, okay, let's pick a typical client. So what would be an ideal client that you've worked with? That's been perfect. We're talking blue skies, perfect weather. Everyone showed up for work. All the materials arrived on time. It's a perfect job. Now think about that job, what was the first thing you did? How did people find you? How did you find them? What was the onboarding like? How did you meet and greet? Then did you do a quote? You went on site. You then did got the approval because remember, we're talking about blue skies. No what ifs. No, like they said, no, or it rained and the guys should have said all of that thing you just want to ignore for now because you want to capture the basic process that you're doing for each job. But you're going to pick one job, one client type, you work your way through. Now you've done the quote. They said, yes, you've done the job, you've got a deposit or whatever that looks like, you finally got the final payment and then you repeat that process again, stop there. That's all we want to look at is the perfect scenario of the perfect job and capture everything you did. So if you're if the attention is part we're focusing on, then what are you doing with marketing? Are you doing Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram? Great, let's capture that. How are you using it? When someone calls up and says, hey, I got your number from a friend of mine that had a job done for you, you guys, you're great. You spoke very highly of you. What's the process in which you take those phone calls or emails? How do you do a quote? When you go on site, what's the process? When you're doing a job, typically with tradies, you're talking about a job that typically starts with a pre-job, during job, and post-job. So we start thinking, what do you do in preparation for that job? You take the tools, you load the trucks, you order materials in, great. Now you're out on site, what does that look like? Remember, you're breaking it down into simple little pieces. It's like getting a big box of puzzle pieces and dumping it on the dining room table and finding the first two pieces, and then four pieces, then five pieces, and suddenly you've got a picture. You're putting together methodically. So our job as a systemologist is to allow that space, to allow you to look at every step of the way that you're working way through, all the way to the point where you get paid. Great, stop. (laughs) You've done all of that. You've captured all of those processes. You've recorded it. And simply in the technology of today, it's great because I can meet with you on Zoom and say, all right, today we're gonna meet with your bookkeeper and we're gonna talk about how do you add a contact in zero? Great, let's go through it. We record it. Craig, great, what's the next step? We do an invoice, great. This step, we're gonna talk about how do you do an invoice or create an invoice in zero? We've already created the contact. The next flow is obviously gonna do an invoice. We've documented it. And again, through technology, we can record someone doing a screen share on zero, doing that process and talking through it. And then we record that and use that video recording and what they're saying, turn that transcript into a standard operating procedure and get it into a platform where you're sitting, where all your systems sit in, all right? And then you move on to the next one, right? Now let's talk about the next job that you do. It's bit might be a bit more complex, but you realize the eighty twenty rule sets in. Hey, eighty percent of the stuff we did for easy job number one is the same thing we're doing for more complex job number two. Beautiful. So we're only going to capture the twenty percent of the things that are slightly different. Are you doing residential? Is it commercial? Is it NDIS? Is it strata? Is it council work? Like. But basically you realize that the marketing is the same, the sales and quoting side of it's the same, the finance side of it's the same, 
it's probably the operational component that's slightly different. It's capture that. Suddenly you're duplicating your processes over and over again to the point where you're only focusing now on the operational component. What's the difference between doing that type of job and this type of job? That's how you capture your systems. That's how you record it. And that's how you document it. Again, keeping it super simple. So our job as systemologists to use the seven step approach, the critical client flow, move that into, so you're defining the product, you're defining the service that you're working through. You then assign it to which departments would each one of those processes go to. So that looks like finance, that looks like marketing, that's operational for sure, that's sales. Cool, let's look at the first four main departments in your business. Now we want to look at who is a knowledgeable worker. So who in your business knows most about your marketing? Oh, that's so-and-so. Right, let's bring them in. Great. What about the operational component? Well, that's that's Mike. Mike comes in and he manages all the jobs on site. Great. Let's get Mike to come in and talk about his process that he does and bring the culture in so everyone's not thinking, oh, wow, why do they want to know everything I'm doing? Instead, we want to help you, the business owner, grow and scale your business by contributing to the knowledge that we have around that process. And we want to help you and support you build that system in place so everything's documented. Once you identify the knowledgeable worker, you then record it. And then you get it into your systems platform. In this case, we might use System Hub, which is a systemology product. Mm -hmm. So you bring that in, you've identified it. Now the next bit is how do we get the team when they say, how do we actually do that part of that job? Instead of going to that person and asking, and they have to repeat it a thousand times, they simply go to their systems platform and they go to the right service under the right department and find that process and they read through it and they understand it. Then you can turn those into learning tracks. So when you're onboarding someone new, they can simply go to that platform. This is their role. They read through how to do that process. It's all been recorded. And then they go, boop, I understand it now. I'm now ready to take on that role. So it's, I've met with so many business clients, particularly tradies who are like, I want to, I just want to process everything and record everything. It's like, let's just start with the first puzzle piece. We methodically work our way through and I'll see you next week. And I'll see you the following week. And I'll see you the following week after that. And every Wednesday for an hour and a half, we're going to spend on your systems. And I'm going to show up to everyone and I'm going to be accountable. And I'm going to help and guide you through that process. So the systemology approach, I always like to think of it as turning spaghetti bolognese into beautiful lasagna, <laughs> right? Because we're turning all that mishmash of information and we're layering it out nice and easy so that it gets easier and easier and easier. And then that 80 20 rule sets in. And you're realizing, hey, we just created, we just now have the freedom to be more creative because we've given the business owner the space to breathe, to introduce new services and new products within the business. And that's how they scale and that's how they grow because they know they've documented everything else. Hey, we're just going to follow the same system, create a new service, document it, and then move on to the next one. So that's where systemology really sets itself differently than just going, this is a great program. Let's start documenting everything we do. Right, I can okay. guarantee it lasts for about a week. So that's now, where we fit in. Um, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to, uh, I, I suppose, go back to a few things that you touched on. Now, I've been saying this for years. The eighty twenty approach is because most businesses have got a lot of stuff going on, and and um, you know, besides locking the key people down to actually build the systems, you make that easier. I know that, but. Um, I'm thinking about you know the, the 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 tradies we deal with plumbers electricians that are they're out there they're just doing it doing it doing it as Michael Gerber always says. So yeah. I'd probably I'd I'd like to use some examples of how you've made it easier for the contractor to do this because that's you know what I've found is most of the companies I work with just never get around to doing this and uh, and I know if we can find a way to hold them accountable and get them to do this stuff and make it easier for them. Um, it's going to make their life easier in the long run, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, this is where we need to be flexible. Like we're business owners as well. So we need to say, we understand that most tradies start at 7 a.m., right? That's, that's the normal cycle of any trade. So what we try to do is first identify who the knowledgeable worker is. So we're removing the business owner from that because the business owner is the bottleneck. Right. We know that we want to encourage them to say who else within your company could support you on that process. We don't need the business owner for every extraction. We need to invite the other teams in. And yes, because we're a global company, we can say to some of the tradies that we work with, 
are saying, can we meet at 6.30 in the morning, Sydney time? I was like, yep, absolutely. Because as a systemologist and there's systemologists all over the world, we'll use a systemologist from the States, for example, which is four o'clock in the afternoon for him. So he's thinking, this is great. This is perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Meet the tradies that are only available because if time is a constraint or is an excuse, is availability just something that they're saying they they just don't have time for because they're so busy working in their business? Well, how do we create that that freedom and that flexibility to say we're available to work with you anytime that you're available? So let's fix, let's find a time. Because if it's important to you to get this done, it's important to you to scale and grow and remove yourself from the day-to-day operations, how can we make it easier for you? So we're not constricted to time zones, we're not constricted to days of the week. It's saying we will make it as easy as possible for you so it works. Now that's the that's one of the hardest questions to ask and one of the hardest things to to answer. The even harder one is showing up because it is so easy. And we worked with many companies that have gone, I want to do this every week for at nine o'clock in the morning. All right, by week three, they're struggling because they're being they're working back in their business. So the attention that we put in the very beginning is let's collect all the people that we're going to be working with. So if you aren't available, we can then jump in and meet with someone else who can be available during that time slot and get that done. So it's preparing every session saying, okay, this is what we've done this week. Next week, we're going to meet with this person and that person. We're going to cover off these things. Okay. So everyone's prepared. So it's not like we just rock up on a, on a the standard call and go, Hey, what do you guys want to do today? We don't do that at all because we have a system for that. So we follow that system by preempting and preparing every single session. So during the week, that business owner and whoever the knowledgeable workers are know that this coming Thursday at 6.30 in the morning, we're going to be covering off these processes and you're going to meeting with these people. Cool. We have time to ensure that they're going to show up because we know it's tough. We know it's tough to be there every single week. Make it flexible. Okay, what about every two weeks? Does that make more sense? Because every two weeks, we might be able to then capture these processes, gives you time to still work within your business. But every two weeks, we catch up and we go through the process of the same thing. So the seventh, the 12 step approach with systemology is 12 sessions to capture that 80% of everything you're doing. Use the 80, 20 rule there so that you have eventually have created a process and a system for creating your own systems. So that's the goal to meet with those sort of challenges. So with the, I love the 80, 20 rule. I think it's, um, it's very powerful, but how do you, um, how do you get the contract to decide what is the most important part of the yeah you know, like because 80 percent the 80 20 rule is basically um uh 80 percent of our results come from 20 percent of our activities and i and i believe that to be true um so uh so how how does the contractor um big and small actually choose what is the most important part to actually take and systemize to bring the best results yeah some of the things that we do and again after three and a half years and working with over 150 businesses, I've worked out a way to decide and help them and guide them make those decisions on where to start. All right. So first thing I'll do is they have a website. Typically, most websites, particularly in Tridies, say services at the top. You click the mm-hmm. services button and it uses a little drop down. We do residential, commercial, India, like all of the list of the things that they do that they made public to the rest of the world is what they do. That's the first thing we talk about. But the first thing we focus on is what's the easiest one? What is the one of these lists of services you're presenting on your website is the one you could do blindfolded. In fact, your entire team could do it with their hands tied behind the back. Let's start with that. And we do the CCF, that critical client flow. We do the systems assign sheet to track which processes we're capturing. And we make it super, super easy. And like, of course we know how to do that, but let's capture it. Let's record it. Aren't you sick of repeating it? Great, let's do that. And then you move on to the more complex things. Then you move into the what ifs. Then you move into, you're putting a spirit level up to do what happens when the spirit level gets knocked over, right? We now have some of our tradies that are getting a GoPro and they're sticking it on their heads, those little head straps. And they have a GoPro and they're going on site and they're talking through a process of how to do certain things on on a job site. So there's no longer restricted in being in front of a computer at your office when you know you need to be out on site. Take your phone, your Android, your iPhone, record that process. This is how we do a tech talk. This is how we prepare for a job. We meet with the team, we form a circle, and we discuss how we're going to do this job. Let's record that. Even if you have a little bit of fun and make it a bit of role play, record it. Bring Mm -hmm. it back, send us the recording. We document it, extract it, and turn it into a standard operating procedure. 
So it's about being creative, particularly with the technology that's available these days. Record everything you're doing more than once. We've had, uh, we're getting um, recordings now of, of boys sitting in the workshop, having a discussion post-job, right? So the business owner or one of the team members just recorded them having that conversation. So mm -hmm. this is a debrief. That's an example of a debrief. Okay, let's record that. You're doing it every job, aren't you? Yeah. Is it the same sort of conversation? Yep. Things that we've learned, things we can do better next time, and things that we've done a great job that we're getting a pat on the back. Fantastic. Let's record that. Because when you're onboarding someone new and they see that that's involved in part of the process, that new team member is like, these guys are great. They're so organized. So our job is to go, well, we've worked with a lot of plumbers, a lot of electricians, and a lot of builders and things like that, and a lot of trades. I've come across one business that's doing this. Have you thought about doing that? And they're like, oh, I've never thought about that. That's a great idea. Great. So you can be trade or industry specific when it comes to systems. But the beautiful thing about systemology and the systemologists around the world is we're all dealing with different trades every single day. But something you didn't know, you didn't know until you know it, you can't believe you can't live without it, right? That's our job is to introduce these ideas to say, wouldn't you like to save 10 minutes a day by doing it this way? That's that's two weeks a year. That's a holiday. Oh, that's a good point. Let's try that. Okay, good. Let's do that. And then we'll document it. So it's encouraging them and saying that not everyone's the same. Not everyone's uniquely different either. But there's still the trades that follow the same line of the work that they're doing that we're seeing every single day. Yeah, look, that's one one thing I've noticed with because I've worked with a large volume of companies. Well, I have worked with a uh, large volume of companies over the years. And uh, no two companies I've been in do things exactly the same. So uh, uh, a process like this using the uh, the system hub platform that's custom made for the business, focusing on, you know, the uh, the 20% that delivers the results is a fantastic idea. So just one more thing, Rob. And uh, so how does the owner, the business owner or the managers, the key stakeholders ensure that the systems are followed using uh, the systemology uh, processes? So what's, yeah. what's some of the things you recommend there? Well, there's two things that actually stand out to create the culture that people just do things. Or this is the way they do things around here. They go to System Hub and they find out how a process works by looking at which department are we talking about? Operations. Which job are we talking about? That job, because you list every single job in each department. Right there it is. Now, the couple of ways to do that is inside System Hub, you have what's called learning tracks. Mm -hmm. And so the learning tracks are saying, right, if we're going to hire an apprentice whose job only job is to prepare and clean up and do whatever that job looks like. Well, you've already captured the systems over in the system side of it. You captured those systems and bring them over to your learning tracks. Then you say, hello, apprentice, your role is this. These are the learning tracks that we've created from the beautiful processes we captured over here. Read through them and they click the little agree button when they've read through it and watched the video and they understand it. They click agree because they've been assigned that task or that learning track. Now, if the client or the apprentice or whoever that is that's looking at that particular process isn't jumping into System Hub and that platform is not there for them easily enough because they're always out on site, we're working with one company that's actually created systems. Inside System Hub, when you create a system, you can turn it into what's called a landing page or a read-only website of just okay. that process. Now you've got your process, your bullet points, the video, it's embedded. It comes up beautifully on an iPhone, iPad, whatever the device is, the system is there, the process is there. Now you can go one step further and just, yep, here's the link to the process and you send that link over. Now in today, again, using today's tech, you can turn that landing page into a QR code. You then send that QR code to whoever it is out on site, straight to their phone, okay. to scan this QR code. This is how you do it. They scan it, boop, up comes the process. They've read to the bullet point, they've pressed play, the play the video is embedded inside of their device. They now understand how to do it. So we have one client that does rail, they fix trains in Sydney. So mm -hmm. what they've done is they've turned every process, particularly a safety process, into a QR code. The QR code is then printed out and laminated, and that QR code is actually stuck to the tool. That they're, that whoever's going to be operating that tool must scan the QR code. They must read through it. They must watch the video. They go, yep, okay, I understand how to use this tool now. They have it on trucks. So before you enter this truck, scan this QR code. We have physiotherapists that have QR codes in front of each room. So the person that's prepping the room for a, a patient or a client, they scan the QR code and they know how to prep the room. Hot water, 
you know, cold packs, how to get the bed ready, like all of that kind of stuff is already there. So that you, there is no limitation to say that what you need you sitting in front of your computer and log into your systems management tool and understand that process. Use technology to make it as easy as, as you can. So there's no distractions, there's no detours and how, well, I just did, I couldn't find it. So I didn't do it. I didn't follow that process because I couldn't find it. Use technology to make it super easy so everyone knows exactly where to go and where to find out how to do a process. So they're not asking everyone repeatedly again and again. So someone's stopping what they're doing to explain something. They simply say, just scan this QR code or click this link. This is how you do it. And basically that's how that works so that everyone knows what to do and how to do it. But it's creating the culture from the very beginning. So mm -hmm. the business owner says, hey team, we're capturing our processes. This is what we're doing now. And this is how you find it. And if there's resistance within that team, you would need to focus on that particular person or those group of people to say, this is the way we're doing things around here now. Stop asking, start looking, because this is where we have it. The information is sitting right here, ready to go. I love it, Rob. I want to share a, 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 a story um, on a process that I uh, implemented many years ago. It was even before, probably even before I was introduced to uh, David. And um, I've always believed, I mean, a lot of companies I work with have processes, yeah, I've worked with larger companies that have a process manual and there's pretty much systems for everything. But a, a full-blown process manual of everything we do in the company is given to the technician when he starts his employment. Now, I've always said that how many of those um, plumbers, electricians, air conditioning technicians are going to actually go through the whole process manual and execute on it? And one one of the things that I did and I found it worked really well for me is I create a checklist um, for a technician. So, for example, this contractor I was talking to today, I said, uh, I asked him, what's been the biggest gain that he's got from working with me? We've been working together for about a year now, and he got really good results fast. He said, Alan, one of the things you recommended was a checklist. And uh, so what I did was this, checklist was 18 points of how to run a drain call, uh, the way that the car, and and not every company um, is going to run the, the, the same way. So you create the checklist of how you want it to be. And what I did was, as I said, was before I was introduced to you guys, David, uh, sorry, Rob, um, before I was introduced to, um, you know, systemology and, and David Jennings, I uh, created the checklist and I actually uh, recorded the checklist as well. And, and I shared that with the technicians because our most plumbers, electricians spend a hell of a lot of windshield time. And I believe it's the best opportunity to learn. So so anyone that wants a little a tip and it's probably it's part of your your software is is take your, your process, intensify it into a you know, not not too big a document, just something that a technician can actually read through, then record the thing and let them actually listen to it while they're driving. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but I'd like to um, hear how you would do a similar uh, process. Right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So when you're looking at your systems management tool, that is a platform of why you do things. So this is a bit of, it's an overview of a process when you're looking at now the tech space, everything's cloud-based, you log into something and you're using it from any device. You could be anywhere looking at it, reading through it, listening to it. What you, the most important thing to do when you're capturing a, a system of why, so this is why we do this process. This is the importance of it. This is the purpose of how this process to learn how to do it, click here. It takes you across to your Asana, your Monday, your ClickUp, whatever project management tool you're using is now the how. So it's, mm -hmm. it's the checklist of what you're working through. Now they're interconnected. You have your project management tool connected directly with your project management. So you got systems management sitting over here, your project management sitting here. They're all talking to each other. Now you can even go one step further. And again, you're talking through this. So if someone, as like you said, windscreen time, so they're driving along, you're recording that process to say, this is an overview of this process. When you need to learn how to go through the checklist, here's an example of the checklist. And here's a link directly to that checklist. So when you think about business systems tools, 
you're thinking, okay, so the typical business system tools would be, what is your office suite? Well, it's Google or Office 365, mm-hmm. right? Link it through. Here's how you do an email. Here's how you autoresponder. Finance department, you got your finance, zero, MYB, QuickBooks, that kind of thing. You Then you have your CRMs, which is, you could be your Salesforce, your HubSpot, your pipe drives, and all that kind of thing that you're keeping track of your clients. All of these web-based tools are all talking to each other. The system hub or your systems management tool is the why you have all of these tech tools sitting there and you can refer to them and link them through back. So again, the, this is the importance of having an overview is because you're saying, this is the process of, this is why we do it. This is the importance of it. And to see more about how to do that, click here. To see an example email of how we do it, click here. To watch the video of an overview of a screen show of using Loom, which is a screen recording software, click here. Mm. So there's the system hub or the hub of your systems becomes the epicenter of everything else that's working around it. And most companies, they end up spending way too much money on different subscriptions. So the goal is to look at the core systems and subscriptions that you need within your business and link them all together so they're all talking to each other to make it as easy as possible and not so confusing while you're out on job, while you're out driving from site to site, you have something that you can listen to. As particularly if you're driving, if you've got an audio set up, because remember, if you're telling a story, and yes, it's been documented, but even mm. more importantly, you're actually telling the story of how you're doing it. It's like listening to a podcast while you're in your car. There's no reason why you can't create this click the play button while you're driving and someone is talking through a process like an overview, because that's the point of the systems capturing, referring back to the space of where the checklist and other things are. So that's where the systems platform really helps. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Look, um, that's, that's the one thing that I've learned with, I suppose, employing hundreds of technicians over the years and training more, more so that, um, you know, you, you've got to try to simplify things as much as possible, you know, cause most, most plumbers and electricians and air conditioning technicians just want to go out and do their job. And if you give them something that's too complicated and there's too many steps, they tend to they tend to just go back to doing things the way that they believe it should be done. So, look, this has been fantastic, Rob. I do appreciate you uh, joining me uh, for today. And systems is a is a really really important part of a successful uh, company. Now. Uh, I always ask everyone that joins me on the podcast, um, any particular book that you're reading that you would recommend and um, how can anyone that's listening to this podcast get a hold of you? Yeah, um, obviously the book that I would recommend the most would be the Systemology book written by David Jennings. Right. And you can, if you're not into reading and you're into Audible, then there's an Audible written and narrated by Dave Jennings, which I always call it, he's got a bit of an angelic voice because he speaks clearly slowly and methodically but also very easy to listen to and yeah you can turn the speed up on the audible book if you want to but the point is you you read through the book understand the language around creating systems for systems understand the the mythology around the systemology approach is super easy but it's things that we know we just don't apply it because it's not something that becomes repetitive in our own day-to-day lives so if you read the systemology book or listen to the audible highly recommended um, we actually have a link to uh, the book ordering straight from our website. So if you go to cloudconnect.com, right, and we can put a link in there. It says cloud with the and cloud and K with a connect. So cloud connects, connect with a K uh, yep. dot com. Uh, you'll see all the information around the systemology and the services that we provide. But more importantly, if you put cloudconnect.com forward slash SSN, you will see that there's a specific landing page for, for you and I. So that if you want to, order the book, I'll post it to you. Anywhere you are in the world, you just fill in that form and we'll post you the book for free. Fantastic. I really do appreciate that. So best way to get a hold of um, of yourself. Yep. Cloudconnect.com. That's it, is it? Right right on the front page, you can click a button and it books a 15 minutes in with me straight away. I'll make sure everyone gets that in the uh, show notes. And uh, yeah, I want to thank you again. It's been a fantastic episode. And uh, systems is just, it's just that important, right? Yeah. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate it. Oh, thanks. Right. You, thank you, uh, Rob. And uh, good to see you again, buddy. And uh, that's uh, that's a wrap for another episode of Pipeline to Profitability. And uh, look forward to uh, catching up with you on the next podcast. Cheers, Rob.
Thanks, Alan.